Hello, hello. Good morning. I'm George Sanchez. The Congregation of Zion Lutheran Church in downtown Hamilton, Ohio, welcomes our Facebook and radio audiences to our 10 o'clock worship service. Our services are also available on the zionhamilton.org website. If you are in need of a prayer or want to have our weekly service bulletin emailed to you, please contact our church office at 513-863-5774 or email us at zionlutheranoffice at gmail.com. Leading the service is Vicar Patty Eaton. Our music director is Bill Seal. The lector is Sonia Smith. Prelude is Voluntary by Ed- Edward Algar. Special music is The Servant Song by Richard Gilliard. Postlude is My Faith Looks Up to Thee by Lowell Manson. Or Mason. Now we begin with our prelude. God is good. All the time. All the time. George, is my microphone on? Can everybody hear me? My mic is not on. Okay, what? <laughs> I will talk loudly. Okay, is it on now? No. Okay. Okay, George is telling me it's on. All right, I'm going to talk loudly, then I'll actually replace the batteries. I think that might be what it is, even though it's showing green. Um, I would like everybody to give a round of applause for Missy Beers. After many weeks of hard work, our fire alarm system is finally functioning. It took took multiple calls and lots of visits, and she did a wonderful job. Thank you, Missy. Our budget requests need to be submitted by September 30th. We're trying to get a little bit of a jump on preparing the budget. So please see if you can get those in by September 30th. One change to this week's calendar is I am going to Berkeley Square on the 25th because next week I'll be in California for a seminar at my uh, seminary. So Pastor Mark actually switched with me. So Pastor Mark will be there next week and I'll be there the week after. And the youth group, I love this, we have signed dates when you guys are meeting, so this way you can get it on your calendars. September 22nd is pizza planning and games, so please attend that if you can. And messenger articles are due on Friday, September 20th. Everything else is October, so I'm going to stop there. Are there any announcements from the congregation? If not... Let us listen to Bill's prelude and prepare ourselves for worship. Acolytes, you can just come forward. I have to change the batteries. So you can come forward, please.
stand. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins in the presence of God and of one another. Please kneel as you are able. Merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. And now we will sing, O God, my faithful God.
the grace of our Lord. Now, I don't think this one's working. Hello? Okay. The grace, nope. Okay. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Try to stand here and see if this mic picks up anything. I'm not sure if any of the mics are working. You can hear it on Facebook. It's just the house speaker. So if you just want to stand there. Excellent. Thank you, Erin. I will speak loudly because my mother used to say to me many times, quiet. So I can talk loudly. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Oh God, through suffering and rejection, you bring forth our salvation, and by the glory of the cross, you transform our lives. Grant that for the sake of the gospel, we may turn from the lure of evil, take up your cross, and follow your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of the lessons. Yeah, you can try here. Oh, I think it's working. Oh, I'm on now. Hey, let's try that one and see how it works. Hallelujah, huh? <laughs> Hallelujah, yes. The first lesson. Oh, yes, it works. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> the first lesson is from Isaiah 50, 4 through 9a. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. 
The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me, who will declare me guilty. Word of God, word of life. We will now read responsibly Psalm 19. The heavens are telling the glory of God, and the ferment proclaims his handiwork. Yet their voice goes out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In the heavens he has set a tent for the sun. Oh, sorry. There is no speech, nor are there words. Their voice is not heard. Which comes out like a bridegroom from the wedding canopy, and like a strong man runs its course with joy. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. Moreover, by them is your servant warned. In keeping them, there is great reward. Keep back your servant also from the innocent, and do not let them have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgression. The second lesson is James 3, 1 through 12. Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers and sisters, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness. For all of us make many mistakes. Anyone who makes no mistakes in speaking is perfect, able to keep the whole body in check with the bridle. If we put bits into our mouths of horses to make them obey us, we guide their whole bodies. Or look at ships. Though they are so large that it takes strong winds to drive them, yet they are guided by a very small rudder wherever the will of the pilot directs. So also the tongue is a, very, is a small member, yet it boasts of great exploits. How great a forest is set ablaze by a small fire, and the tongue is a fire. The tongue is placed among our members as a word of inequity. It sustains the whole body, sets the fire the cycle of nature, and is itself set on fire by hell. For every species of beast and bird, of reptile and sea creature, can be tamed and has been tamed by the human species, but no one can tame the tongue, a restless evil, full of deadly poison. With it we bless the Lord and Father, and with it we curse those who are made in likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessing and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this 
ought not be so. Does a spring pour out forth from the same opening both fresh and brackish water? Can a fig tree, my brothers and sisters, yield olives or grapevine figs? No more can salt water yield fresh. Word of God, word of life. Gospel according to St. Mark, the eighth chapter. Jesus went on with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi. And on the way, he asked the disciples, Who do people say that I am? And they answered him, John the Baptist, and others, Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. He asked them, But who do you say that I am? Peter answered him, You are the Messiah. And he sternly ordered them not to tell anyone about him. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If you want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they say in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. The Gospel of our Lord. As we sing the doxology, would the youngsters please join me up here on the altar? we're doing today at our message, our youth message, is we're going to install our Sunday school teachers. But I wanted you up here so you could be up here with your teachers. Would all Sunday school teachers and staff, including Stephen, please come forward. And I've also invited Laura, who teaches in a parochial school and teaches Sunday school every day that she teaches. So Laura, please join us as well. And Miss Kathy, You could join us because I know you do a lot to help Mike. Yeah, you don't want to. Nah, 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 she says. (laughs) Should we force her to come up? (laughs) Come on, Kathy. Come on. (laughs) She is the woman behind the man. (laughs) Okay, would you guys like to come stand by your mom? You can do that if you like and stand by grandma. That would be wonderful. Okay. Good. We're now on page eight. A reading from 1 Corinthians. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same spirit. And there are varieties of services, 
but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. Brothers and sisters, you have volunteered your time, your energy, and your gifts to the children, youth, and family ministries of this congregation. Will you offer your giftedness to this ministry in the confidence that it comes from God? If so, say, I will, and I ask God to help me. A reading from Proverbs. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not rely on your insight. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make straight your paths. Will you carry out this ministry centered in Christ's call, striving to trust God as your guide and inspiration? A reading from Ephesians. I pray that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through God's spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Will you trust in God's care, seek to grow in love for those who you serve, strive for excellence in your skills, and honor the gospel with a faithful life? I now ask you, people of Zion Lutheran Church, will you today renew your commitment to our youngest brothers and sisters, our children and youth who look to you for guidance, support, and examples of righteous living? We will, and we ask God to help us. People of Zion Lutheran Church, will you claim these gifted people as those called by God to help carry out our congregation's ministry to children, youth, and families. Will you support them and enthusiastically celebrate the work they do? We will, and we ask God to help us. Will you pray for these leaders and the young people they serve, celebrating our children and youth as the ones Jesus blessed and welcomed? We will, and we ask God to help us. We have something very special this year. Miss Victoria has asked to be a Sunday school teacher. She wants to help the little ones. So when we have the little itty bitty children come to Sunday school, they will see Victoria. If she has no children, she'll be in her Sunday school class. But otherwise, she will be helping and following in her mommy and her grandfather's footsteps doing Sunday school. Thank you, Victoria. Yay, Victoria. Let us pray. Gracious God, for Jesus' sake, empower these ministers to care for the young ones in our family of faith. Help them to teach faithfully, lead patiently, and guide confidently. Stir up in these servants the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence both now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, who has given you the gifts and the will to do these things, graciously give you the strength and compassion to perform them. Amen. On behalf of Zion Lutheran Church, we now commission you for ministry, grateful for your gifts and your willingness to serve. May we have a round of applause for our Sunday school. Thank you. Okay. Thank you all for coming up. That's exciting. Thank you, Stephen. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing and acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Mercy, peace, and love be yours in abundance from God, our Heavenly Father, and Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. I apologize to the people listening on the radio. I'm going to do um, a little experiment, and you're not going to be able to see it. So 
I'll explain to you what I'm doing. I have a tube of toothpaste and I have a dish. And right now, I'm going to squeeze all this toothpaste out into this dish. Can you see that? It's green. I'm not sure I want to brush my teeth with something green. But there you go. Now this is a little tube of toothpaste, so I don't have a whole lot in this dish. But my question to you is, can you get the toothpaste back in? No, you can't. Uh, you could cut this end and shove it back in, but then you'd have an open-ended tube. So no, you cannot get that, this toothpaste back in this tube. Just like not being able to get that toothpaste back in the tube, once you have said words and they are out there in the universe, you can't grab them back. They are out there for every infinity, for infinity and for everyone to hear. When I have said something that makes me groan like, oh, why did I say that? That's never happened to you, right? <laughs> I groan and then I think of a cartoon. I saw this cartoon one time. This woman is sitting there and in bu bubbles all around her head are these words. And she's trying to grab them and shove them back in her mouth. And it can't be done. James told us this morning that no one can tame the tongue. He said, it is a small member, yet it boasts of greater exploits. I heard one person one time say that the tongue is the strongest muscle in the body because of what it's capable of doing. James said, the tongue is a restless evil full of deadly poison. We have many sayings in our society about words, such as, sticks and stones may break my bones, but names will never hurt me. How wrong that is. Words hurt. And if you have ever been hurt by words, you know that that hurt can last for a long time. Even after you have forgiven the person who has spoken the words, those words may torment you. They may bother you. So words hurt. How about my mother's two favorite phrases. Tell me if your mother was like mine. If you can't say anything nice about anybody, don't say anything at all. How many persons' mothers said that? Mm -hmm. Or, it's not what you say, it's how you say it. How about that one? Yeah. And as I got older and talked to my kids, I became my mother. <laughs> and I'd go, oh, those are my mother's words. <laughs> Well, if you were to ask my youngest grandchild what my favorite saying is about words, she would in no uncertain terms tell you, just because a thought pops into your head doesn't mean it has to come out of your mouth. She has a slight problem with a filter. <laughs> so I have to remind her of that. And we all, as we get older, develop filters. But then when we get past a certain age, we lose those filters and we sort of feel we can say anything we want. So there's a fine time between those two times when you use your filter so you don't say something that's not going to sit well with someone else. A few words of wisdom from the Bible. In Proverbs 12, 18 it says, reckless words are like a sword. I would never want to hurt someone with a sword and I would never intentionally say something to hurt someone. In Proverbs 18, 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue. Words can tear down and actually cause death. When you think about it, your words might have caused the death of a dream in somebody. Just as they can cause death, our words can build up and give life and encourage someone. And your words may have helped that person go after that dream. So it can go either way, depending on how you use words. In Psalm 34, verse 13, it says, keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking lies. That doesn't need any explanation at all. <laughs> in our Psalm today, Psalm 19, that was not the Psalm that was in the lectionary. I changed it because I wanted the Psalm to speak to words. 
And I started this sermon with, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. I say that to myself before every worship service. I say that to myself before I go and do a, a pastoral visit. That's what keeps me grounded in how I use my tongue. Preachers and teachers, preachers and teachers, all have good intentions. But at times we're all human and we can mess up. Communication is challenging. When you are trying to say something to someone, you know what you want to say. However, sometimes when you say it, the person you're talking to doesn't interpret it the way you want it to be interpreted. And you may have a misunderstanding. So what I like to do is, if someone says something to me and I'm taking it perhaps the wrong way, I try to stop them and say, hey, wait, what do you mean? Because they're the only one that knows what they mean because they're the one talking to me. So with communication, if you can come to an understanding that as soon as you hear something that bothers you, let the person know so that they can then clarify for you what they're saying. Words are difficult to put together and get them out in a way that people will understand you. In nursing school, we made many mnemonic devices because we had a lot of things we had to memorize. We had to memorize body systems and the name of the nerves and the name of the muscles. So we would make a mnemonic device, which I cannot share any of them with you because they are a bit naughty. So, but that's how we remembered. <laughs> the naughtier it was, the more we remembered it. <laughs> so that's just how we humans are sometimes. I found a mnemonic device that talks about thinking before you speak. That was another one of my mom's favorite things. Can't you think before you say something? Well, I guess not. <laughs> I guess I didn't this time. But the word think, what this author is saying is before you speak, think of the word think. The T stands for is what you are about to say true. The H stands for is what you are about to say helpful. I is is what you are about to say inspiring. N is what you are about to say necessary. And the K is is what you are about to say kind. If you answer no to any of those letters, don't say it. And that has helped me when I have the time to think about what I'm saying. Because then I don't say it. And whatever I wanted to say, I'll reflect on later and then see. And you know what? In hindsight, then I'm so glad I didn't say what I wanted to say. So it takes a little bit of practice and a little bit of time. Uh, but like James says, we can't tame the tongue. But we can try. And we can pray, because we can pray to the Holy Spirit, please watch my tongue. Please put a rope on my tongue and tie it down. Whatever, however you want to say it, pray to the Holy Spirit that you say just what is appropriate at the right time. Today we installed our Sunday school teachers and we prayed. Help them to teach faithfully, lead patiently, and guide confidently. Stir up in these servants the gift of your Holy Spirit. Teaching God's word is both a privilege and a responsibility. Please let's continue to pray for those who are teaching God's word. And as we sang this first song today, I had not looked at the first hymn of the day um, prior to coming into church this morning. But in verse 3, here is my sermon. Keep me from saying words that later need recalling. That was verse 3. So I circled that. That's a good verse to remember. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, help us to communicate with each other in a respectful and loving manner. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's children say, Amen. Amen.
Would you join me in singing hymn 661, I Love to Tell the Story. the whole church let us confess our faith we believe in one God the Father the Almighty maker of heaven and earth of all that is seen and unseen we believe in one Lord Jesus Christ the only Son of God eternally begotten of the Father God from God life from light true God from true God begotten not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate, the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Please kneel as you are able for the prayers.
drawn together in the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray with confidence for the church, God's good creation, and all who are in need. We pray for the church throughout the world, including St. Including Paul Lutheran Church in Lynchburg and Redeemer Church in Hamilton. Form us into communities of forgiveness and grace. Help us to notice when you are calling us into new relationships and give us courage to embrace the uncomfortable and unfamiliar. Hear us, O oh God. We pray for the earth and all its inhabitants. Protect land at risk of wildfire and heal dying forest. Where fire brings destruction, raise up new growth. Guide us in tending precarious ecosystems. Hear us, O oh God. We pray for those who govern nations, tribes, and cities. Open them to the cries of people in need. Direct them in shaping policies that prioritize the health and well-being of all who struggle with hunger and housing insecurity. Hear us, O oh God. We pray for all who are ill, all who are lonely or anxious, and all who grieve, especially Paula, Frank, Barbara, Sonia, Pat, Peggy, Shirley, Sarah, Randy, Patty, Dennis, Jim, Alice, Julia, Carolyn, Eileen Wyatt, she had a stroke on Thursday, as well as those we hold silently on our hearts. Pray for doctors, nurses, and healthcare workers who provide care. We lift up our friend, especially Julia Hilbert, and the family and friends of Earl Robinson, who recently went to his heavenly home. Draw them close to you and soothe them with the promise of your enduring love. Hear us, O oh God. We pray for teachers, professors, librarians, school administrators, staff, and all who support the education of young people. Sustain them as they shape learning communities rooted in equity and authenticity. We pray for children of all ages and their learning. Hear us, O oh God. We remember our beloved dead, who with the great cloud of witnesses bear witness to your saving grace. Accompany us in our pilgrimage of faith that we too place our hope and trust in you. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We entrust these and all our prayers to you, holy God, in the name of your beloved child, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Lord be with you always. And also with you. Please just share our peace with people that are close to us. And those people at home listening to us and watching us on streaming, the peace of the Lord be with you. I will come offer peace to our visitor. Peace be with you. Peace, peace love. Peace down there, girls. Peace, dude. <laughs> Okay, let's find our seats. Our choir is ready.
Please find your seats. Blessed are you, O God, source of every gift of your creation. By these gifts and with our lives, help us to serve one another and all in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord. Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, 
and by his glorious resurrection, open to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. our bread of life, our table, and our food. You created a world in which all might be satisfied by your abundance. You dined with Abraham and Sarah, promising them life, and fed your people Israel with manna from heaven. You sent your son to eat with sinners and to become food for the world. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. He broke it saying to his disciples, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, this is the new covenant in my blood shed for you. Take and drink. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life given for us and his rising from the grave, we await his coming again to share with us the everlasting feast. By your spirit, nurture and sustain us with this meal. Strengthen us to serve all in hunger and want. And by this bread and cup, make of us the body of your Son. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Jesus welcomes you to this table. Come, here is your God. Zion Lutheran practices Eucharistic hospitality. Communing members of all Christian fellowships, all are invited to commune with us today. You may be seated. Donna, this is the body of Christ given to
May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Um, it was just brought to my attention that some of you might be missing page 17. Or page 18, is that what you're missing? Okay, sorry about that. Bill, can you play the canto? God, you have welcomed us to this meal and fed us with dignity at your table. Send us now to welcome others and to be at peace with one another through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. God Almighty, God most merciful, bless you, keep you, and give you peace. Amen. Amen. And our closing hymn is What a Fellowship, What a Joy Divine. Number 774, just in case you don't have it.
thank everyone that joined me in worshiping this morning and in assisting me. I appreciate the help. Go in peace, follow Jesus. Reaching out with God's love. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you.